Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Whiteville, North Carolina. And I'm taking a little bit more of a closer look of the 2015 Jeep Renegade. And this is the Latitude trim level with the uh, Glacier Metallic paint, which looks like a like a silver color to me um, when I looked at the name Glacier I was thinking more of a, a white but this is like a silver it's kind of like a billet silver type but uh, it is uh, pollen season so this vehicle is covered in pollen right now so you just have to excuse that but I'm uh, getting some mixed opinions about the the styling of this vehicle I really I like it and I'm, I, I'm I was kind of surprised that people say it's ugly and stuff but uh, that was um, I guess you know it's you know subjective taste there but I think it's a really cool little SUV it really it, it's not like some some of the small bright colored SUVs are a little cheesy looking and uh, just kind of over the top with the with the styling I think this is a this is fine I mean it, it doesn't have any uh, particular awkwardness to it I mean it has the the Jeep front end um, it's a little square looking but it's um, I think it looks good so anyways uh, like I said this is the latitude trim level and this one has a couple upgrades one of them is the 18 inch aluminum wheels so uh, this is a little bit different wheel here than you, you would find on a um, you know standard it does have the privacy glass the roof racks there It's got the Renegade baggage. So let's go ahead and open this door and see what we see. And uh, as far as the Easter eggs, uh, my previous video, I, if you haven't seen it, this vehicle has little, little things in it that kind of, right, like right here. This is a like a Jeep symbol here with the the seven slot grill and the two round headlights, uh, reminiscent of the Wrangler, and this one too. And uh, so it's got those, you know, pretty much throughout the whole vehicle. And there's some other cool things too. But uh, one thing I found out is that this, this shape of these speakers, or th that shape is supposed to re resemble the hooks that climbers use. They grab a um, thing and it's a quick disconnect hook that you use for, for climbing ropes and stuff. And it's supposed to kind of uh, represent that shape of like an outdoor climbing rope hook so I thought it was pretty interesting and here we have the black cloth seats with the uh, the Jeep name written in different directions here and uh, there's a little bit of a contrast in the, in the lighting right now but hopefully you can see pretty good you do have the signature Jeep handle right here and uh, this one's very comfortable um, it's kind of rubber feel but very solid Glove compartment is full of paperwork and stuff, but uh, this is a pretty decent size for a vehicle this size. Manual adjustments on the, on the seats, by the way. And let's check out in here. This is the back door. You know, it's a little bit of a smaller door in here in the back, and um, but you do have a really good amount of headroom there, so you're not really bumping your head getting in and out of this vehicle. And these seats will fold down, so like say if you wanted to, uh, you know, it's a 60-40 split, so you can, they fold down flat. So um, if you needed more cargo space and less passenger space, you can fold one or both of them down, and that way you can, uh, you know, utilize that space. And so, and uh, you know, I'm not going to go over all the Easter eggs, but just the ones that I kind of missed out on on the previous video. So, uh, and one of those Easter eggs is one under here. This is the fuel, um, where you put your fuel in. But right here, it has a little spider. And it says, Chow, baby. I don't know if you can see that. But the little spider's there, so if you're uh, afraid of spiders or whatever, make sure you know that before you open up the lid and there's a spider there. Um, it's not that prominent, so it's not gonna like, you know jump out at you but uh but it is kind of like um you know it sticks out a little bit it's a little bit of a uh texture there so that's a pretty that's a pretty neat little easter egg 
and uh, so I saw you know Bigfoot's in here. So if you hadn't seen my other video, uh, you might, might want to check it out. It's my teaser video of the the Renegade. So let's take a look here in the back. And this one does have the backup camera. There's the backup camera there. And there's plenty of plenty of headroom here to walk underneath it. So it's kind of like a little shelter when you're trying to put grocery bags in the back while it's raining or something. But we've got a uh, basically a pretty good amount of storage space. And this one has like these these uh, these vents right here but I don't know there's no speakers in these so I guess there is a um, there's an upgrade with the speaker system to where you can get the uh, the subwoofer back here and I guess that's where there the speakers would go and when you lift this up it's got this storage space and it's got Jeep written right there and uh, now this one in particular does not have the spare tire it has the tire inflator kit right there so, and that does have like a fix a flat type stuff, uh, like a, I don't know what it's called, but anyway, it'll, you know, seal a tire, and, tire sealer or tire inflator sealer or something like that. And uh, so that would, I guess that would be used for emergencies or whatever. And you have that funnel right there for your capless fuel um, system there. You would need to use that funnel if you're using a, uh, a gas can or something to put the gas in the vehicle. So looking at the back, it's got the little spoiler looking thing there on the back top of the glass. Then you've got the signature, um, you got the Jeep signature in the middle, but then you also have that, that shape there of, and that's supposed to signify the, the shape in the gas can in the old army Jeeps. So I don't know if you remember, old army Jeeps have a green gas metal can that were attached to the back of them and that um, it had that kind of shape in it, I guess for structural integrity or whatever. And uh, so it's supposed to represent that. Alright, so there's the rear view mirrors. This one in particular doesn't have the, um, the proximity key. You can get it with this vehicle. This one does not. And the actual key is a little bit different. Let me go ahead and show you now. It is a... Let me see if I can show you here. Alright, so here's the key. It's, it has Jeep on this side. And it's a, kind, of a, kind of a large key. And it has your buttons here, lock and unlock. And then it has the flip out key. Like so. So there, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and get in. There's your door lock controls, window controls, and stuff here, and uh, side mirror adjustments. Then you got the manual adjustments there on the seats, automatic headlights, and then you've got your dimmer switches here. And I plan on making a nighttime video soon. It's a little bit. It's a little, it gets dark later now, so I um, have to kind of come back after work to do that for you guys. But um do plan on doing that soon. So here's the steering wheel. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel. And this one has a little bit different texture than the ones I've seen before in other Jeeps and stuff. It has more, it's more of a grippier feel. Like say the Jeep Grand Cherokees have like a more of a smooth leather. This one's more um, more rugged feeling. And it's got the wider uh, grips right there so you can get a good handle on it. So you got a bunch of buttons on the steering wheel, just like the other Jeeps, a lot of the other Jeeps have. And your cruise control is on this side. So that's pretty pretty much the same as any other cruise control. You turn it on, you set it, and you go. Now uh, on the right hand side of the steering wheel on the back, back here, um, you can roll your window, your, I'm sorry, you can turn your volume up and down on the right side and on the left side you can change to the stations so it has these buttons on the back they're not really easy to see but um, you can feel them back there so they're designed to where your hand is just comfortably on the steering wheel and you're driving and you can kind of flip through the stations without really moving your hand so on the left side we've got your Bluetooth buttons and um, and basically when I say Bluetooth it's referring to your cell phone and you can send 
uh, and receive calls you can hang up you know here so basically once you pair your cell phone uh, when somebody calls you you'll start hearing ringing sounds through the radio it'll dim whatever's playing through the radio and it'll start ringing and then you push that green button and then answer you just basically start talking and say hello and you can hear them through the sound system and then when you're finished with the call uh, you just hang up there with the red button and um, and now it's it's similar to where if you wanted to make a call you push the green button and you can say call a certain number um, you can you know you just say the number or you can say call a certain person that happens to be in your phone book so like if you have somebody named you know um, Bob or Joe or whatever in your phone book you could just say call Joe and then it'll look up your phone book see Joe on in there and just call him now the voice recognition is uh, th this button here this is where you actually talk to the vehicle and it does come with this handy booklet here uh, to where it kind of gets you started you know telling you uh, different commands you can say and how to say them in different tips because it does take there's a little bit of learning um, exactly what you can say but once you learn how to use the voice recognition it's a very useful uh, tool and it's a very good safety feature um, so anyways like I'll just show you an example and push it. Tune to satellite channel 8. Tuning to satellite 8. So there you go. It just takes, um, you just say, you know, stuff like that. And and it does, you know, take a little bit of time for the computer to recognize your voice if you have a specific ad accent or something. So right above these buttons here, you've got these arrow buttons and OK. Um, that corresponds with right between the gauges there, which is pretty cool. The, the gauges are pretty neat, um, but I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the arrows, basically I'm going to push the down arrow now, and it's going to scroll through this menu system. The top one, number one, is speedometer. It gives you a digital speedometer. Scrolling down, the next menu selection is vehicle info. Right now it's showing tire pressure. Um, I push to the right, and it gives me uh, different options. And you notice... I don't know if you can see, but right there um, at the top, when I'm scrolling, there's little bubbles. So basically, like there's little rolling circles, and I'm scrolling left to right, it's telling me that there's more screens to be seen. So I can go to any of them, and I, at any time I can always scroll down to the next, um, you know, option there on the menu. This is the fuel economy. Scrolling down again, it gives me a trip. I've got two trips, and the trips are pretty cool because you've got your distance but also your average miles per gallon and the time during that trip that has been elapsed basically and then this uh, telling you just what your radio is doing any stored messages like say uh, it's time to change oil that kind of stuff will, will be will show you up here and the screen setup that's where you can change uh, the different um, like say right now it's showing you the outside temperature you can change that to say um, you know distance to empty or something like that all right so then I scroll back and there's the speedometer so that's what these buttons here are for right here on the steering wheel and as far as the gauges you've got your temperature gauge there on the left it's a digital readout fuel gauge there on the right you see it's got about a half a tank and the um, miles per hour is on the right and look at there 160 is what it goes up to that's pretty uh, that's pretty awesome so on the left side is your RPMs and that little splatter right here that is like mud splatter that is your um, your red line so basically you don't want to rev your engine into that zone for sure but um, and normal driving won't even come close to that but it's pretty neat from what I understand there's a unique uh, splatter and color for different trim levels which is pretty neat And you've got your uh, your headlight controls here. Uh, I mean your turn signal and your bright and dim switches here, as well as uh, over here is your windshield wipers on that little thing there. Then you got your center uh, uh, vents kind of protruding from the dash here. The dash is soft to the touch, pretty much everywhere. 
it is textured as well and it keeps uh, you know the sun from glaring up at you while you're uh, driving so here is your radio this one has the uh, kind of a more basic radio and um, it is a touchscreen though so like say um, you know you can push the buttons there I'm gonna reposition this vehicle because the sun's kind of causing a pretty significant glare So get, bear with me a second Alright, so now, uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Um, in, the, in the camera, it looks the glare looks way worse than what it actually is. I can see it fine, there's no glare uh, with my naked eyes, but the camera seems to pick up a glare. But anyways, um, you know, you got your radio here, and you can change AM, FM, or satellite radio. Uh, media, this is where you can uh, connect, say, a USB, or uh, you can actually play music through a USB, an auxiliary input, or through your Bluetooth on your phone once you pair your cell phone or any kind of Bluetooth device for what I understand. Phone, uh, this is where you would pair your phone and also uh, once you did pair it, once you pair it, uh, you would have your phone book would you know show up here, recent calls and uh, what's cool is you can always transfer back to your cell phone there at any time in case you're, you, know, you want to have a private call. You can turn the screen off if it's distracting you. Uh, you can just push that to turn it back on. It does have a cool compass here, which is uh, not not um, calibrated yet. This vehicle's uh, just on the lot, so I need to drive it around in circles for a bit to calibrate it. More will show you um, your outside temperature. Uh, you have a nice big clock there in case time is of the essence. And then you've got your different settings, um, units, and um, and different things like that. You got your volume there, uh, mute button. The back is to go back at a certain screens, um, but it's not all screens. So if you go into a certain menu system, and then you can back out, back into the top menu. But you know, certain screens were already in the top menu on that one. Turn through the stations there. This one doesn't. There's some blank buttons down here for other uses. This is your climate control. So basically, your fan speed, your temperature and where you want the air to blow there and I like the chrome outline it's pretty neat there's your your auxiliary input and your USB plug as well as a power supply there and then there, there's the Jeep symbol and there's a little pocket there which has a, a rubber mat and the bottom of it and I was told that these these are maps of the Moab trail so uh, that's pretty cool Now here's your shifter, and uh, basically it's just as, you know pretty basic. You are to uh, when you put it in reverse like that, your backup camera will show up here, and you can see it's kind of a it's a wide angle view, but it's fairly clear. Um, so basically this is the back of the vehicle, and this is the sky. So you can see all the way from the back of the vehicle all the way up to the sky, and you can see pretty far left and right, um, and that's a good safety feature. And then you can also put it down and drive like so. And if you're driving and you need to change gears, this does have the nine speed transmission. So basically if you need to change gears uh, manually, like say if you want to downshift going down a hill or something like that, or you're struggling going uphill, unlikely. Um, but anyways, if you're, I don't know, for whatever reason you want to change gears, you just slide this over to the left and then it eliminates the plus and minus and you can manually um, change the gears. And now it won't go too far out of range, like right now it won't let me go out of second gear. It only goes first and then second and then that's it. So um, it's not going to it's not gonna really give you uh, a massive amounts of control because it's, you know, it would be not good if you started off in like eighth gear or something like that. It wouldn't be good for the, the torque converter and transmission, every, the engine, everything. And it may even stall on you. So it kind of keeps you within a more rational range I guess you can say uh, so that's your shifter this is your parking brake so I'm gonna go ahead and just engage it that's how you engage it this is how you disengage it here's your cup holders and they got um they've got that 
that gas can symbol at the bottom of them. I don't know if you can see that. And it's kind of a small armrest. It is, um, you know, like cloth here. And basically it'll slide forward and back in case you need to fine tune it or whatever. It also lifts up. And inside there you have the USB plug. And this is more of a charger USB plug. I don't think you can play through music or anything like that. But um, it is a pretty deep pocket there for putting stuff. And at the bottom is another rubber mat um, with the trail map on it. Which I consider another Easter egg, so um, it's pretty neat. Alright, we have just kind of a standard rear view mirror. And on the side of the rear view mirror, you see it's got that Jeep symbol. Got some tap lights up here. And uh, there's your visor with a mirror and light. This little thing there that sticks out. All right, let's take a look under the hood. Now this one does have the 2.4 liter. There's another four cylinder option with this vehicle, but this one has the 2.4 liter Tiger Shark, multi-air, 180 horsepower engine. And this is the engine you want if you decide you want to pull a boat or something like that. Um, it has, if with the towing package and everything, it has um, 2,000 pounds of towing capacity. So that, this this engine sounds a little bit different than you know your average engine. That is that multi-air technology. Um, the 2.4 liter is a multi-air engine, and um, I'm not going to really go into too much detail right now. But I'll probably make another video, maybe with Matt, the engineer guy, um, and see if we can kind of explain that. Now. While I'm, in, while I'm in here looking under the engine, and I don't see any Easter eggs under here. Maybe if there's one, you can tell me where it is. But uh, a lot of people say, well, when I get a new car, they have like a burnt smell when um, for the first week or so. And I just want to show you, uh, you see down there on the side of that catalytic converter there. Let's see if I can zoom in. not really focusing but there's a catalytic converter you see there's a label on the side of that catalytic there we go there's a label there now those labels when that thing gets hot those labels are going to burn right off so um, that's part of the reason why you have um, some kind of burnt smells and stuff because the adhesive on the label and the actual label will start burning and eventually just burn completely off and then that way you won't smell it anymore but uh, basically you know things like that will um, will cause that smell and this one does have a double latch for the hood so you got latches on both sides the hood's, the hood's very light very very light feeling this is a unibody frame uh, vehicle and it has a uh, I think it's yeah 70% High car, uh, like high strength steel, and the rest is aluminum and uh, magnesium alloys. So let's take a look at the window sticker here. All right, I'm going to put this information in the description, but you can check it out now with the pause button if you like. All right, there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, any clarifications, and if you if you know where any more Easter eggs are in this vehicle besides the one I pointed out today, and also the ones in the previous video, please let me know. Um, it's a really it's really fun to find out about uh, you know little unique things in cars and stuff. So, and this one is uh, especially unique with uh, Bigfoot being in it and everything. But anyways, um, thanks for watching, and um, if you don't mind, if you can you know rate this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.